Good morning, class 12 children. Today we are again back with our online class. Hope uh, you all are fine and uh, safe at home. Uh, stay home and uh, make the best use of the online class that you have provided with the uh, explanations, homeworks, assignments. Uh, keep uh, busy yourself to complete this task because uh, uh, after the lockdown gets over, we'll be perhaps left with uh, uh, minimum time uh, to complete the rest part of our syllabus. Uh, that is why uh, do not waste your time now and uh, engage yourself into uh, your productive uh, assignments. And uh, uh, before your school gets uh, open, you complete all the works as uh, assigned by all the teachers to you. So, I also wanted to uh, tell you that uh, whatever online classes that you are uh, provided uh, in these days, uh, uh, be uh, very serious to watch and understand all the, these online classes because uh, uh, hopefully you will not be uh, again taught in the uh, class when the school gets uh, reopened. So whatever taught um, is all taught, that's why. Um, go through this uh, when there is time with you so at the same time you might have gone through the uh, uh, message which was posted yesterday uh, so please uh, either, uh, please uh, go through that note and uh, try to follow what is given there so now we come back to uh, our today's class so I would like to continue uh, with the play The Tempest written by William Shakespeare because uh, now we are just left with uh, one more act to complete our play that we started in the last session mm, sooner the better and uh, uh, after we complete uh, The Tempest then uh, we'll switch on to the next uh, book we have uh, so uh, let us uh, recapitulate uh, what we had in our uh, last act, Act 4, Scene 1. There we discussed three sections uh, in the act. The first of uh, Prince Ferdinand, where he stood successful in piling up the heavy logs and in return to the task what he had uh, done as ordered by Prospero. Uh, he was awarded the hand of uh, Prospero's daughter Miranda uh, uh, in the marriage. And uh, we also saw the warning uh, of Prospero to uh, Ferdinand that uh, he would not violate the virginity of Miranda before uh, uh, they are sanctimoniously married. So that was what uh, uh, the first section was. And then we moved on to the second section where we saw uh, the mask, uh, the ceremonial entertainment of the 17th century and uh, the mask was performed by uh, the spirit characters where we saw the goddesses Juno Ceres and uh, Iris. However, we know that uh, these all characters are spirit characters. Uh, Ceres uh, is a personated character of Ariel and uh, the other characters were uh, of the other spirits. Uh, Juno being the queen of heaven, the wife of Jupiter uh, is here uh, in this mask and uh, she is with her sister Ceres, the goddess of agriculture and uh, Iris who is a messenger uh, to goddess Juno and is also the goddess of rainbow. So along with these three goddesses we also had uh, uh, several uh, spirit characters as uh, harvesters, reapers um, and so and so. So they uh, perform their uh, uh, mask but uh, the mask uh, abruptly got uh, uh, ended because you know that uh, Prospero now we move on to the section 3. Prospero realizes uh, the murderers, Caliban uh, with his uh, confederates, Trinculo and Estevano, are heading uh, towards his cell uh, with a view to murder Prospero. And uh, we saw uh, the mass abruptly ends. Then, uh, when these three uh, got into the scene, uh, here we saw the three uh, moved ahead uh, to murder Prospero, but uh, once again we saw the foilage of their uh, murder plan because uh, uh, here we saw Prospero and uh, Ariel being invisible and uh, 
uh, baiting uh, the three of them uh, with the glittering cloths that were hung uh, between the lime trees and uh, the three of them got uh, uh, busy themselves in choosing the best cloths for themselves and uh, we saw um, the plan of their murder is foiled by uh, Prospero and Ariel. Uh, uh, towards the end of the scene we notice here that uh, the three of them uh, Caliban, Estebano and Trinculo were chased away by the hunting dogs. The hunting dogs were uh, all the spirit characters uh, being uh, uh, magically brought by Prospero and thus the scene comes to an end. Here we notice Prospero is uh, with all his commands and uh, his enemies are uh, at his mercy and uh, we know that Ariel is uh, also on the uh, words of getting his freedom. So with the realization of the fact that Ariel is going to get his freedom, the scene comes to an end. Now we, want, we move on to the last act of the play, The Tempest, written by William Shakespeare. So today we'll take uh, the beginning of it and uh, likewise in the other uh, remaining online classes we have, we'll continue with this. So let's begin now. So Act 5. So Act 5 is also with just one scene so let us see what happens in the act so this is the concluding act of the play which we started in last session so let us happily uh, see the last part of it so i hope uh, you are with your textbook so please see your textbook and uh, uh, underline the difficult words uh, as explained uh, in the simple me uh, in the simplest meaning uh, in this class so please see so in act 5 Scene 1, Prospero uh, is now fully at his command. Uh, he here describes the condition of uh, King Alonso, the King of Naples, uh, Sebastian, Antonio, Gonzalo, uh, and the other two lords, Adrian and Francisco. Uh, now, uh, almost uh, uh, the hour has come to an end. Prospero realizes the fact that he is very near uh, to the closing of this part, and uh, here, we also uh, see a very very important thing that uh, Prospero decides for himself. He is going to abjure, he is going to surrender, he is going to give up his magical knowledge because uh, now he feels here that it is no more required to him. And then uh, we see uh, towards the end uh, Sebastian uh, and Antonio uh, who uh, yet did not realize the fact of what they had done in the past. Uh, they still unrepented. And we notice uh, Caliban, Trinculo, uh, and Estevano entering in the scene. And uh, we'll move towards the happy ending of the play, The Tempest. So let's begin. Act 5, Scene 1. Enter Prospero in his magic robes and Ariel. So here we see the scene is taking place before Prospero's cell. The scene happens in front of Prospero's living cave and uh, Prospero enters in the scene in his magical attire in the magical garment and there at his side is his favorite spirit Ariel with him. Now Prospero speaks to his favorite spirit Ariel. What he says see Prospero says now does my project gather to a head that means now my now my plan has come to an end. It has now come to its climax. It has reached to its climax. Prospero says to Ariel. So now does my project. Project here means plan. Comes to its climax. Now this is the uh, uh, the genit of what he has targeted. My charms crack not. And he says my charm. Charm here means magic. Does not fail. Wherever uh, there was the application of Prospero's magic. He stood successful. And uh, thus he is guaranteed. That wherever there was an application of magic. Uh, it all has come out successful. So Prospero well judges this and says, My charms crack not. So my magic does not fail. My spirits obey and my spirits have obeyed me to whatever task I have assigned to them. And time goes upright with his carriage. And time is now going on as per my wish, my want. How is the day? And then he questions his favorite spirit Ariel. What is the time of the day? What time is it? He asks. Ariel says, on the 6th hour, that means it is nearly 6 o'clock in the evening, he says. At which time, my lord? And then he reminds, 
his master Prospero. At which time, my lord, you said our work should cease. You said our work will come to an end. Cease means come to an end. Thus, Ariel reminds his master Prospero that uh, six o'clock in the evening is the completion of all the task. Thus, Ariel says this, reminding his master, it is six o'clock in the evening, my lord, and uh, this is the time you had told that uh, everything would come to an end. He says, Prospero then says, I did say so when first I raised the tempest and thus Prospero also affirms it saying that yes, I did say so. I said to you, when first I raised the tempest, when I first raised, raised means blew, blew the tempest. Tempest is the storm in the sea. Say, my spirit, how fares the king and, and his followers? And then he asks, say, my spirit, my dainty spirit, how fares the king and his followers? That means, how are king and his followers getting on he asked who is the king king Alonso, the king of naples he asked about the king and his followers how are they getting on now ariel responded confined together that means they are all uh, brought in one place they are all held as prisoners in the same fashion fashion means condition in the same condition as you gave in charge as you ordered me to do he tells ariel reports saying that they are all confined they are all held as prisoners in the same condition as you ordered me to do, as you commanded me to do, just as you left them, just as you tell them, uh, told them to do. All prisoners, sir, they are all held as prisoners. My, my lord, he says, in the lime grew, and where it is? In the lime trees. Group means trees. Trees of lime. Which, whether fence yourself, out of which your uh, cave is made up of, and that protects against any rough weather, this lime group means the lime trees, which is a very hardwood tree. And uh, this very tree wood is made a uh, prosperous cell, which protects uh, uh, Prospero and his daughter against any rough weather, he says. They cannot buzz till you are released. So they cannot move. Buzz means move. They cannot move an inch until you have released them, until you have freed them, he says. The king, his brother, the king, King Alonso, the king of Naples, his brother Sebastian, and yours and your brother Antonio. Avoid all three distracted. They are all mad-like. Distracted means they are all mad-like. They are in the state of madness. God knows where they are. That's what here Ariel uh, gives the response of the king and his uh, followers. And the reminder, mourning over them, and the reminder, and the remaining, who they are? Gonzalo, uh, Lord's, Adrian and Francisco, they are all expressing the sorrow over them on seeing the three completely mad-like. Brimful of sorrow, this, so they are brimful, brimful means full of sorrow. These rest are with full of sorrows and dismay and they are also disappointed because they could not believe what they saw is happening with uh, King Alonso and uh, his brother Sebastian and Antonio, the faulty Duke of Milan. But chiefly, but most importantly, him that you term, him refers to Gonzalo. That you term, that you said, sir, the good old Gonzalo, Lord Gonzalo, his tears run down his beard like winter straw. So he is crying. Old Lord Gonzalo. Here Prospero has talked about Gonzalo and his doings, the positive doings. He was into tears, right? His beard like winter drops. Winter drops refers to melting of his snow. So his uh, tears are falling like... Uh, uh, the melting of his snows from eaves of reeds eaves of reeds means from the thatch roof when the roof is made of straw we call it thatch roof so when the water uh, falls or the rain drops uh, the rain falls down from the edges of this roof right we call it uh, eaves of reed just like this uh, there are the tears rolling down from the uh, eyes and cheeks of Gunjal. Your charm so strongly works them. So your charm, uh, your magic has very strongly, very wonderfully worked on them. That if you now behold them, that if you see them, behold me see, that if you are present at that moment when I held them as prisoners, if you had seen them, your affections would become tender. That means you would have also felt sympathy on them. You would have sympathized on seeing their condition, how they are. This is what is. The report told by Ariel to his master Prospero. Then Prospero says, Does thou think so, spirit? 
then prospero questions spirit is that what you think is spirit you being a spirit this is your thought he asks he could not believe angel then says mine would sir were i human then angel says i would feel sympathy or i would have sympathized my lord if i were human like you because we know that ariel is a spirit right and being a spirit even he can understand the feeling in human thus prospero was um, uh, surprised to hear uh, this uh, um, feeling coming from ariel the spirit so prospero asks is that what you feel spirit then ariel says i would have definitely sympathized my lord were i a human he said prospero then says and mine sir and he says and my sympathy shall be uh, shall be okay aroused he says because i am a human has thou which art but air as you have felt because you are made of air because we know that ariel is made of uh, air and fire that's why he can melt himself into uh, air and he can burn into fire himself that's why here prospero says which art but air which you are in air made of air and yet you are a touch that means and yet you are touched on seeing the condition of the uh, group he said a feeling of their effect, affliction and he says right uh, with a feeling of their affliction with a feeling of their affliction affliction means misery in a bad condition so when you saw the bad condition of the king and his followers uh, you even uh, got touched on seeing them you even felt on seeing them though you are made of air here here prosperous says and shall not myself and i and i am myself and that means i would definitely feel because i am a human one of their kind so one of their kind means one of uh, the human beings like they are i would definitely have the feelings when you as a spirit made of air and fire can express the uh, uh, sympathy on seeing the condition so why not i i am a human one of them he said that release all as softly passion as they that means and fully sensitive to the sufferings if i have seen them so i am a human i would have uh, felt uh, very much uh, sensitive enough to feel the feelings of uh, or the sufferings of this group he said right be kinder move than the word and i would have definitely been very kind on seeing what uh, uh i would have seen them here uh, prosperous is though with their high wrongs i am struck to the quick and he said though they have done the heaviest mistake in their lives the heaviest errors in their lives i am struck to the quick that means in my most sensitive part i am still okay here uh, to uh, to judge on their mistakes what i have done he says yet with my nobler reasons against my fury do i take part so yet with my nobler reasons against my fury fury means anger though i am very very wild with anger on the, on what they had done to me in my life right so i am to do i take part that means i am engaging because of uh, uh, the king and the rest i am today where i am right so i am okay uh, i am still um, suffering a lot but yet i have a heart of a human here okay prosperous says and then he says, and he tells the rarer action is in virtue that in vengeance this is the most important uh, line in the play i want you to underline these two lines the rarer action is in virtue than in vengeance this is the theme of the play and uh, is the most important line of the whole play the tempest written by william shakespeare so it means the rarer action in is in virtue than in vengeance that means the virtue of forg- forgiveness is nobler than the spirit of revenge that means you need to have a heart of uh, forgiving than to go for taking revenge prospero um, speaks this to uh, his favorite spirit ariel saying what the rarer action is in virtue than in vengeance vengeance is revenge so he tells the virtue of forgiveness is nobler than uh the spirit of revenge right this is the most important line in the play and is the theme of the play they being penitent so they are repenting now my wrong doers are now regretting of their past work what they had done they are repenting the soul drift of my purpose that extend not a frown further 
Now the sole drift of my purpose that extend not a frown further. That means not to be angry. Now I have controlled my anger. Now I cannot be that angry as I should be. Because I am a human. I realized. I felt. For what they have done. But he already spoke the most important lines in the play. The rarer action is in, uh, in virtue than in vengeance. As I already explained. The virtue of forgiveness is nobler than the spirit of revenge. Here he told. So he says as a human that he has a heart to um, uh, feel sorry for them. Go release them, Ariel. So he orders his uh, favorite uh, spirit, Ariel. Now you go and release them. Now you go and free them. My charms I'll break. Now, now my charms. Charms means magic. Now I want to uh, break my uh, uh, magic. I want to end my magical career, he says. I'll break their senses, I'll restore. And I and they shall be themselves. So I'm going to end up my magical knowledge. I'm going to bring an end to my magical knowledge. Right? And they shall be themselves. And they shall be normal now. Who are just like mad for a time. Right? So Prospero orders Ariel to go and release uh, King Alonso and uh, his followers. They are mad-like, almost mad-like. Now he wants them to be normal, like uh, all or every uh, human being. Here Prospero says, and Ariel takes the order and says what? I'll face them, sir. So I'll go and bring them here, sir. Immediately I'm going and bringing them here, he says, and, he's, and he goes and bringing them here. Now Prospero, after the departure of Ariel, now what he says? Now he says, Prospero, traces a magic circle on the stage with his staff. Now what does Prospero do? Prospero traces. Traces means draws. Prospero draws a big circle in front of his cell, in front of his cave. He makes a big circle. Right? And he stands inside the circle. And standing inside the circle, now he speaks the soliloquy. And you know what is soliloquy? Right? A soliloquy is a speech where there is a listener or there are listeners, but the listeners don't uh, speak anything. Now see, what does, um, or the Prospero, or Prospero here he speaks the soliloquy where he is uh, speaking to himself audibly, right? There may be a listener, there are listeners, it's unknown to us. Now Prospero says, what is he? Prospero says, ye elves of hills, this is very, very important extract. Prospero says, being very much thankful to all the spirits who uh, has helped him so far in uh, uh, his plan, in his project. So Prospero says, remaining very thankful to all these. He says, ye elves of hills, that means you fairies, elves are the fairies, tiny tiny creatures, fairies, who are uh, the dwellers of the hills, they live in the mountainous areas, brooks, who are the dwellers in the small rivers, brooks are the small rivers, standing lakes, who are the dwellers in the still water lakes because the waters don't move, they remain stagnant, they remain at one place, right? So these fairies do live in various areas in nature, like some in the hills, some in the running waters, some in the stagnant waters and groups and some in the trees, group of trees, groups. And he that on the sands with printless foot do chase the ebbing Neptune and you that live on the sands on the sandy areas with printless foot. Even they walk on the sandy areas, they don't have any footprints, they don't have any footmarks because they are all spirits. Do chase the ebbing Neptune, right? And they chase the ebbing. Ebbing means retreating, right? The mm, water uh, on the bank comes to the bank and then again goes back to the river. It's called retreating. So do chase the Ebbing Neptune. Neptune is the god of sea, right? And to fly him when he comes back. And then they run away when when he comes back, when the god Neptune comes back, right? You demi puppets and you uh, spirits who are demi puppets. Demi puppets are the tiny doll like creatures who are uh, half god, half goddesses. They are okay. Demi, demi means half, semi, semi puppets. That by moon sign do, do the green sour English make. That when there is moon signing, that means at the time of night, what do these demi puppets do? They make the green sour English make. 
they make the rings of yes or no? green uh, sour um, test ring this they make it whereof the ev not binds and in the day the EVs are the female sheep. They cannot chew these uh, uh, this ringless because they taste sour. They taste sour, right? Because of the bitter taste, right? And you whose pastime is to make midnight mushroom, and you are the silk, uh, are the um, are the fairies or the uh, spirits who have the time pass on making what? On making the midnight mushroom mushrooms. They make uh, mushrooms at midnight in the uh, forest areas that rejoice to hear the solemn curfew and they all be happy when there is the curfew hour. Now curfew hour is uh, the evening bell that uh, sounds at 9 o'clock and uh, um, signals that it is the end of the day. So 9 o'clock night is the end of the day for these, uh, for these spirit characters. Right? And uh, this is the time. Uh, uh, the spirits and ghosts uh, wake up to walk freely till midnight or till the next morning when the cock crows. That uh, time is called 9 o'clock till midnight to next morning the cock crows is called kafia for the spirits. So see, so by whose aid, by whose help, weak masters though ye be, so weak agents though you are, I have bedimmed, so I have darkened the noontide sun. So you see, so with your help, what I have done, Prosper says, so with your help, with your, uh, uh, with the help of the spirits, I have bedimmed, I have darkened the noontide sun. Even when there is sun shining in the day, I have made it darken, just like night, with your help. Call for the mutinous winds, and I have also brought the very uh, mutinous winds, mutinous winds, rebellious, revolting winds, strong winds, with your help, I could uh, do with my magic. And twixt the green sea, and twixt, twixt means between, and between the green sea and the azure world, and the blue sky, azure world is blue sky, in between the green sea and the blue sky, right, set soaring war, right, and then, okay, set roaring wars. It is with your help, I brought roaring moments, right, with your help. He says, to the dread rattling thunder have I given fire and with your uh, help I have also brought fire with thunders, right? With rattling thunders, sounding so heavy. And rifted Job's stout oak and I have also split, rifted means broken into two pieces, the Job's stout oak. Oak is a very, very hard tree and with uh, the help of the uh, spirits I could also Divide, break the oak tree into two okay. halves. Right? Yeah, Job is uh, God Jupiter, who is the God of fire. Right? With his own bolt, with his own bolt means with his own thunderbolt, when the God Jupiter or Job throws the thunderbolt and drops fire and causes fire in the um, groups, in the trees. Right? Likewise, I could do with your help, he said. The strong base promontory have I made shake. So, the strong based promontory. Promontory means rocks. So, with your help, I could even remove the heavy rocks, the strong rocks. Right? Have I made shake? Have I shaken? I have shaken even the heaviest rocks with your power. And by the spurs plucked up the pine and cedar. And with your power, I could even uproot. Pluck means uproot the very uh, deep rooted trees like pine and cedar. Pine and cedar trees have deep roots inside the earth. But with your power, I could even uproot them. I could even take them out. Graves at my command have wicked their sleepers and with their power, I could even command the graves who are all dead and lay buried inside the earth. Right? So with my magic and with your support, I could even uh, wake up these uh, graves. Opt means open from their graves and let them forth by my so potent art and let them uh, come forth with uh, my so powerful magic, he says. So, Prospero's magic happens to be very, very powerful. With the help of the spirits, he could do what not, you see. Here in this extract, the power of Prospero's magic is taught. With the help of uh, spirits, what he could do, right? He could even uproot the deep-rooted pine trees and cedar trees, right? 
so potent art means powerful magic but this rough magic but this violent magic he says rough magic means violent dangerous magic i here abjure i have a take is taken a decision now here i abjure abjure means surrender give up now i give up the use of magic he says so prospero has taken the voluntary decision now he thinks that his magic is not required to him now he is ready to surrender it now he is ready to give up and when i have required some heavenly music and now when i require some heavenly music be played in the background which even now i do which even now i am hearing to work mind and end upon their senses that this airy charm is for now i want the assistant of the assistance of the music to uh, right uh, aid me uh, so that i can uh, give up uh, this magical knowledge ceremoniously he says i'll break my staff now i want to break my magical wand staff is a magical wand the stick that a magician carries uh, with which and the magician does mumbo jumbo now i want to break it because i don't need it now bury it certain fathoms in the earth and i want to bury it certain fathoms fathom means depth inside the ocean or sea i want to bury it inside the earth right where no other can again take it out and deeper than did ever plymouth sound i'll drown my book and i want to drown i want to uh, immerse the magical books deep inside the ocean i i want to throw them where even plymouth cannot reach plymouth is uh, the device that measures the depth of the sea where even this plymouth cannot reach at the bed or the bottom of this sea bed i want to throw these magical books out there so i want to i want to absorb my magical knowledge i want to I surrender i want to give up now now you now i think that i don't require it anymore in my life so prospero has taken a voluntary decision of uh, uh, throwing his magical wand and magical books which he prized more than his kingdom more than his own life now with this we have brought the very very important uh, extract the speech of Uh, prospero in his soliloquy hope you understood now what happens there is a solemn music at the background as prospero himself wants it then when there is a soft music played at the background now what happens here enters ariel before now ariel again re enters before prospero then after him comes alonso the king of naples with a frantic gesture with a very surprised look attended by gonzalo he is followed by gonzalo at his back then sebastian and antonio in like manner so they all are aghast they all are surprised to see what they have not expected to see right attended by edrin and francisco and the last ones to come into the scene behind them are the two lords the younger lords whose names are edrin and francisco no doubt they are very passive in their uh, characters but uh, they are present uh, in the scene uh, when uh, king is there with his team they all enter the circle which prospero had made and they all get into the circle which prospero had already made right and there stand charm and when they are inside the circle they are all magically affected they are charm they are under the magic they are under the spell of prospero which prospero observing speak and then prospero speaks to them now what did prospero again say seeing these enemies of his after 12 long years now prospero has already uh, spoke to us his mind he has already decided to absorb his magical knowledge but uh, before he absorbs the magical knowledge he has some of the important things to complete which he is now going to do when he has already brought these uh, enemies of his inside the magical circle that he has made with the help of his magical wand now he speaks to them now this is another very important thing uh what he speaks here this will again see in our next uh online class i hope you understood now uh, what uh, is explained in the beginning of act 5 scene 1 so go through it at home uh, if you locate any uh, difficulties you can uh, clear your doubts uh, as you wish Thank you so much for today.